Okay, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one before. All right, good evening. This is Jim Howard and Jessica Howard with Trinity Security Allies. We're going to start talking about some current events tonight. Welcome y'all to come out. We really appreciate it. We hope that everything is going well with you. Uh, we've been away for a few weeks. Uh, I took a week and went to the uh, Appalachian Trail and hiked up there for four days and then went for four days over to Disney with uh, JC, my youngest daughter, and three of her friends, and I'm still not for sure which one was the most dangerous and which one caused me to lose more uh, uh, years on my life. But that's beside the point. We have a couple of things that we want to talk about tonight that we feel are very important that you need to be aware of. And I have brought, uh, most of y'all know Jessica, and uh, she is online with me tonight, and she has been kind of promoted to the new uh, position of intelligence officer. Uh, she is going out and getting, uh, she does the research for me. And I'm going to let her kind of talk about a couple of things that she's noticed out here that's going on. And we're also going to be talking about the situation that is going through Florida right now. And so let's get into it. All right, a couple of weeks ago, uh, somebody sent this out. In fact, uh, they sent it out right before I went into the mountains. So I didn't really have time to, to get into it. But this guy here, Nicholas Vasquez, and his cameraman, Donald Sapita, have been going all through the state of Florida, creating some havoc. And I'm going to show you some video, and then I'm going to let Jessica talk about it and uh, tell us a little bit more about these two gentlemen. We're preparing us for greater work for your offices. So, Father, I've got to pray that we wouldn't see those as, as, as something negative, but we would count it. I'm terribly sorry to disrupt your service today, but I'm here today as part of a nonviolent protest to tell you about the greatest crime in human history, our government in action on the climate crisis and ecological crisis. We are in a climate emergency, and I'm here to tell you that we have left it too late. My generation is facing hell on Earth. I'm on an 800-mile climate pilgrimage from Miami to, to Tallahassee. Guys, you see that we are in a world that needs you. So now we ask that you use our church to be a light in our community. We are facing hell on earth. So, God, as we go today, God, please ask God to speak life, to speak encouragement, to speak love and joy in every part of our community that we would be. All right. Let's talk about this video for a few minutes. Uh, this guy, uh, Vasquez, uh, gets up on stage and starts talking about global warming. And I'm going to talk about the logistics portion of it or the, the safety team portion of it. And I'm going to let Jessica talk a little more about uh, Vasquez and Sapita and their organization and, and what they're doing right now. But the thing that bothers me the most, one of the things that bothers me the most is they, they let this guy get on stage. I mean, that's, that's the first thing. They just let him walk up. It wasn't like he ran up on stage. He just casually got up on stage. Uh, there should have been somebody there that should have stopped him before he got up there. Second thing that bothered me about the video is that they escorted him all the way out the back of the church uh, where they should have went to a side door or tried to get out some other, some other exit, not carrying him all the way through the worship center. And so these are things that we need to be thinking about. And this is things that you need to be telling your team that if somebody gets up on, if somebody does create uh, an incident or a disturbance inside your church is to get them out of the, uh, the worship center or the auditorium as quickly as possible and not let them continue their, their rant on their beliefs and what they have going on. So these are things that we really need to be looking at. We need to be prepared for. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Jess because she's got a lot of information on this organization. So, Jessica, take it away. So, as Dad showed, uh, Nicholas Vasquez has been uh, to that church, but he's also been to two other churches so far. He's been to two others in Palm Beach. Uh, one of them was an outside service, and he just walked up uh, on a high platform with a megaphone and started talking, and they immediately got him down. Then the second one, he didn't even get on stage. Instead, he walked into the church with a megaphone, was sitting in the back of the church, and just started uh, talking about his cause. And the cause that he's with 
is it's called Re Extinction Rebellion America. And so this is an offset of a group that was founded in the United Kingdom. And long story short, they believe that climate change is going to bring about the end of all humanity in the next 10 years or so. And they believe that the only way to get their message across is to cause civil disturbances, in this case, across the United States. Uh, they also believe in anarchy of the government and instead have a civilian assembly led government. So that's why they're normally listed on fringe groups. In the United States, they have not been listed as a domestic terrorist group, but in uh, the United Kingdom, they have been listed as one of the top key domestic threats to look out for in the next couple of years because they believe in civil disturbances. So that's a little bit about the group that he's with, but also one of the things is that he has been arrested uh, three times, or four, well, three times. Um, and I was just checking up on the Facebook page uh, while dad was showing the video. And he was held in a Sarasota jail about two days ago uh, for doing his protesting and uh, pamphlet passing out on a Sarasota uh, high school campus. But in 2019, he was arrested for trespassing. Uh, in 2020, he was arrested for kidnap and false imprisonment. And then in 2021, uh, just two months ago, he was arrested for being on school grounds and refusing to leave. So far, we haven't seen anything um, physical violence wise, except for that uh, kidnapping charge. But so far, he's been relatively non-physical, non-violent, but still that's something to look out for is people causing disturbances in your church. Just a little heads up specifically on him. He's in Sarasota right now. He posted his calendar online. So I think we have that link and we will be sending it out probably in the recap of tonight's training, but his whole calendar is online. So uh, pending whether or not he gets arrested anymore, which seems to be a common theme throughout his, he's doing an 800 mile walk where he creates disturbances. So he's been arrested uh, quite a few times for that, but he's in Sarasota now. Uh, and on the 11th, he'll be in St. Pete. And then on the 13th, he'll be in Tampa. So that's just uh, a little heads up about him and his group. They're going to uh, churches, schools, malls, uh, farmers markets, uh, anywhere where there's a gathering, they might be there. So just keep an eye out for him and his cameraman. They're normally together and he's normally wearing a white shirt, uh, khaki pants, sandals, and has some sort of climate change flyer on him normally. So just be keeping an eye out for him. Jess, did you have any other current events that you wanted to talk about before we can continue on? Yeah, uh, going with kind of Vasquez and what he's been doing, um, just a reminder that, that if your church posts anything or has any signs or uh, says something in a service that is even relatively considered controversial, Groups like Extinction Rebellion and all of the other groups that we're seeing out here, um, they have been known to come into churches and protest. Um, we're seeing a lot of Google alerts, not necessarily of protests within the church, but of a lot of signs being destroyed. If you have any religious statues, uh, um, just a cross out in your church, uh, maybe consider putting cameras up because they are going around and destroying things. A lot of churches, um, whether you agree with it or not, that have put up uh, BLM signs, a lot of them have been destroyed and taken down. Um, so we've seen a lot of that. If any of your congregation has Trump stickers on their car, something like that, we've seen windows being smashed in. So just this is a reminder to maybe consider having a rover out in your parking lot or cameras out in your parking lot. A lot of the destruction, uh, vandalism happens on weekdays. So obviously you can't have safety team members out there 24 seven. So maybe really consider having cameras if you have a statue or anything valuable out front your property. Um, there's been a lot of spray paints recently. So just keep that in mind. And last, I just wanted to bring this up too with all of the um, kind of the focus on churches right now, we're seeing a lot of um, people coming out 
and saying that there has been a lot of abuse, sexual abuse in churches and children's ministries. So this is just a reminder to remind your congregation, remind your staff to vet who you have employed at your church. Um, it's There's a lot of attack against churches right now and people are kind of using whatever they can find, whatever they can throw. So make sure that you're vetting your people and make sure that uh, especially your children's ministry is safe and secure and whether this this is this has to be within your church whether it's cameras or whether it's check-in systems just make sure that everybody's vetted and make sure that in your policies and procedures you have it so that way no one volunteer is alone with children at any time try and keep it two people at a time um, just a reminder i mean as we should be doing anyway but just an extra reminder to make sure that uh, volunteers and staff are vetted at your church and that's a lot of what we've been seeing recently Well, and that brings up an interesting subject because uh, I've got a couple of concerns, especially with the video that we just did and something that Jessica, I sent, I, I get these alerts all the time. Jessica's taken over the Google alerts for us. So she had found an, a, a document on, it said, the remaining operation thou shalt not steal suspects in custody. And it said Tijuana, uh, Mexico on Saturday, May the 29th. Uh, I'm not even going to try to say their names. Uh, two people were taken into custody in Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, um, with the assistance of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and Mexican law enforcement. Now, these two people were arrested and they're they're waiting for extradition to Florida. Both of these subjects have been wanted uh, following the May 26th arrest of four other suspects accused of stealing donations from hundreds of churches throughout the United States. Now, I don't remember, where did you get this? Where did you get this news release, Jess? Where did you find this? Uh, it was in the sent reports that you send me, uh, okay. the group that goes out and does uh, different threats against churches across uh, the United States and globally. Now, now, folks, this is why networking is so important because I get these from this, or I get from different organizations and because of just time constraints, I can't go through them. And that's kind of why we brought Jessica in so that she could look at all these and start reading these things. But I'm looking at it and the news release says, and this was May 26, 2021. It says, FDLE arrest for an operation thou shalt not steal. The suspects stole over $740,000 from hundreds of churches through over the United States. But Fort Myers, uh, Florida, says that agents with uh, FDLE, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, today arrested four suspects who traveled through Florida and across the country stealing donations from hundreds of churches. The thing that gets me about this is FDLE started this investigation back in December of 2020 after Cape Coral Police Department identified 24 victim, victim churches within Lee County plus additional victims outside their jurisdiction. I want to read that to you one more time. December 2020, after Cape Coral Police Department identified 24 victim, victim churches within Lee County, and then they think that they went up to over 85 churches. They were hitting up to 85 churches a day. So the thing that bothers me about this is, I and, and please correct me, somebody let me know. I might have missed a Google alert where this was going on, but did anybody know about this? Was anybody alerted to these type of things that were happening at churches across Florida? This is something that really concerns me because not only this story that we're talking about right here, but also the story with Vasquez came through an outside organization that posted it about churches in Florida being hit by these guys coming in and disrupting their services. Now, just like what Jessica was talking about a second ago, cameras. I'm going to tell you something right now. We need to be videotaping these people that come into these churches, and we need to be sharing this video. We need to be putting it across the, the Internet to other churches because this guy could become dangerous. We have seen where these radicals, after a period of time, start to use violence. So we have to pay close attention to what is going on. But what I'm getting back to is we didn't know anything about this. And like I said, if somebody else did, please let me know because – I'm looking at this right now going December 2020 and nobody talked to nobody talked to any other churches around here or information did not get out. And like I said, I could have missed it somewhere. There may have been something. I don't want to really, you know, badmouth FDLE, 
But this is not the first time that we've had something that was going on with churches that if it were not for my connections in law enforcement, I might not have known about it. So I just want us to be aware that these things are happening. And we are working really hard with trying to get in with organizations that bring church leaders in or church uh, safety team members in and start to talk about some of these things. FDL agents say to date, more than 1,500 checks were stolen from 636 churches, including 355 Florida churches, 355 Florida churches. And please let me know if you heard about this. Let me know if this was something that, that you came across. But seriously, if it is something that you came across and you don't see it on our Trinity Security Allies page, or our church safety networking page that we posted something like this and something as big as this, we would have come out and done something special on it. So I want you to understand that these things kind of frustrate me that we are not getting this type of information and it's nothing against the law enforcement. You know, me, you, you cut me, I bleed blue, but the thing of it is, is we need to have a closer network with law enforcement. When we have things like this happen, this is just something that is just really, 355 churches, and this is the first time I've heard of this. I, I'm I'm just kind of a little bit disappointed that we did not see anything about this till right now. One thing that I want to add to what uh, Dad has been saying is that with the Vasquez case specifically, the two um, other disruptions in churches happened on May 2nd, uh, both of them on the same day. And we didn't find out about uh, Vasquez and what he was doing until May 23rd, uh, which is when he hit, or later than May 23rd, which is when he hit that other church. But I saw it in the Google alerts almost five minutes after somebody in our network emailed me. And it was just somebody in our network that saw the story. So if you see anything and we haven't posted on it and you think that it's big, feel free to email me and let me know because I would rather see it twice than not see it at all because some things slipped through the Google alerts. The May 2nd and uh, the two ones on May 2nd, we didn't see at all. And one of the May 2nd ones, he walked into church with a megaphone. And side note on that, if you see somebody walk into your church with a megaphone, you might want to stop them before they sit down in service. Okay. Just a little heads up. Let me, let me clarify something here. You see somebody walk into your church that is not a part of your ministry at that moment in time with a megaphone, you stop them. <laughs> You may not want to. No, you stop them. Let's stop them right away because they're, they're not up to any good. I can tell you this right now. So um, so just, you know, make sure that we're watching these things. I, Like I said, that's kind of what we call in police work a clue when, when we see somebody like that that happens to walk in. But um, I noticed some questions out there. It said, it, it, is it Extinction Rebellion U.S. or America? I see that Extinction Rebellion U.S. Uh, as the website. Is that right, Jess? So there's uh, two separate ones. There's Extinction Rebellion, which is kind of the parent organization, and that was started in the U.K., um, but there is an, an American chapter specifically, and that's the one that Vasquez is um, really working heavily with. And I believe it is xramerica.com is the link to that one. Um, and then their Facebook page is Extinction Rebellion America. There's two separate Facebook pages. So if you just type in Extinction Rebellion, you're going to get the one overseas. But Extinction Rebellion America uh, on Facebook reposts all of Nicholas Vasquez's stuff. So you'll see it there. You'll also see a link to his page. And so you'll see all that if you go to their Facebook page and um, I can send out both the link to the Facebook page and the link to their website, where the calendar is, where the uh, Nicholas Vasquez's blog is. I can send all of that out in the follow-up email. One of the things that we have to understand is that he is posting where he is going. I mean, his route, he's, he started down in Southern Florida and he's heading up toward Tallahassee, but that could just be a diversion. He could show up anywhere. I, I, I really don't want to trust that he's putting out his dates of where he's going to be and us be caught uh, flat footed. Uh, th this, this guy is trying to make a name for himself. He's trying to do, because he has this guy that's coming around with him and doing the video. Uh, and, and here's the other thing too. I, I would, I would want to stop that person from videoing inside the church just because of what just happened there. And, and I would, I would tell him to stop. I would do everything I could possibly do 
to, to get him to stop uh, without being physical. Uh, I've showed this trick before. I've, I've talked about it before, and this is something that we can talk about in training, well, how we should be, you know, we may could respond to it. But I just think that we don't need this, his, his friend walking behind him doing videotaping. So um, I, I just, you know. Yeah, I just want to add in the church where he did walk in with the megaphone, uh, his friend was videotaping. And at the end, I assume it was a member of the safety team just because of how they handled the situation. But one of the safety team members actually grabbed his phone away from him. And dad, if you want to talk about maybe maybe the logistics behind that, but all the video shows is him grabbing his phone. Uh, Nicholas and uh, Donald, the cameraman left. I don't know how he got his phone back if they went back later, uh, but you see the safety team member turn off his phone and that's the last you see of that. And the other thing that we were talking about earlier that I just wanna add is that uh, all of these videos of disruptions in churches and schools, uh, they're all on Facebook. Uh, we don't know if the churches have any recollection of this, but um, Nicholas Vasquez and his organization have tagged the church in the video, so they know that it's out there. So uh, just adding that to, if you want to talk about maybe grabbing the phone away and whether or not that's a good idea. Well, I, like I said, when we get it, when we do some more training, anybody that wants to, to I'm going to start throwing one of my old cell phones back in my backpack so I can kind of show you how I would handle it. And we won't talk about it on, on, we don't want to record it right now. So um, is it legal to physically I just stop? Wanna, oh, Go ahead. That's what I was going to talk about. A uh, question, is it legal to physically stop these guys? Uh, I'll let you answer that, but I just wanted to add, uh, two of the churches involved have trespassed them. So I think they were threatened trespass at one of them, but the other two did trespass them and they threatened to call the police if they came back. So they have done that, um, but I don't know if they follow through on it or done anything else. Um, is it legally to physically stop? I would say yes. <clears throat> and I would say I would handle it with as much uh, tack as possible. Uh, first off, you would, be, you would be legal to escort him off your stage. Uh, the way that I would handle it is I would first ask him to come with me, please, so that he can discuss his his agenda, well, whatever he wants to say or stuff like that. And then I would gently take him by the arm. And if it did not, he did not go, I, I would physically remove him from the stage. First off, we don't know if he's a threat. And, and I would immediately, I mean, I, I, when you, when you, when Jeff says that these churches, they don't, they don't know if they follow through or anything like that. I, of course I'm, I'm lucky in our church, we have a dispatch. I would have dispatch on the phone contacting Pasco County immediately. Uh, as soon as he walked toward the stage, we, we would be on call. In a bar or in a restaurant, which is a private owned entity, you would not allow a person uh, to cause or create a disturbance to where people were in danger or anything like that. You probably would physically remove that person. I mean, they have people there that normally would do something like that. I would say, because uh, Tim Holloman asked a really good question, and Bruce, thanks for coming up. I would say, though, um, that it depends on which church, uh, state you're in. I would be very careful. Other, other may, you know, may other, uh, states may say, no, you cannot. I have never, ever heard, uh, uh, of a sheriff or anybody else tell us no. Now, like I said, Tim, I would have some sort of policies and procedures of what we would do. I know in ours, I, I'll go back and check. I think we do talk about escorting the person out. When I talk about escorting, I'm talking about using the herd effect, where you get as many people as you possibly need to, to get that person out of, of the area. You know, the, the, we, we're going to move this person some, one way or the other. This guy, as we watch in the videos, he did go with them. Most of these, most of these people that disrupt your church services that have a statement to make are not trying to get arrested. That, that's one of the things that they, you know, they, well, let me rephrase that are not trying to be violent. Let me put it that way. It hurts their cause. If all of a sudden this guy were to start fighting people inside the church, he loses all credibility. But right now he's just saying he's a peaceful protester. Now, the other week, here's something that happened at our church. We had a guy that was out po putting little uh, cards on the car talking about the COVID vaccine, uh, the COVID vaccine. This, this is one of these things of what he was saying was not what the church's policy was. And so we immediately stopped him. 
we immediately told him that he had to pick up all these cards and take them out and that if he continued to do this that we would trespass him we invited him in the church the only thing that we didn't do right that night was that we did not get a picture of him we should have gotten a picture of him so this is one of the things that i stress over and over and over and over again we need to make sure that we're getting pictures of these people because we want to pass out the information to everybody around. As soon as I got this, I mean, Larry, uh, Larry over in Polk County, uh, Larry Booth sent this over to me and, and I was really literally in the mountains when I, cause I got some cellular reception, was able to look at my emails real quick. I saw it out there. And so I wanted to get it out as quickly as possible. And this is another reason why we're doing it tonight and talking about it. But there's other things that are going on. And, and I want to address the, the, the theft of money real quick, because this just hit us really hard at our church. Uh, we, we've been very lax at our church for a long time as far as collections and things like that. And I will tell you, it will come back and haunt you. Uh, we caught the guy that was collecting our money who had been with our church for many years. We caught him taking money from uh, the church. And he's been he's been relieved. Now the church was gracious to him and said he could come back. I, I am pushing for a police report. I think that we need to have a police report. We don't know how much money he took. I'm, I'm going to talk to our church about getting a forensic, uh, a financial forensic person that can come in and kind of give us an idea of what we're looking at. But I can tell you that he took a lot of money from us. I can tell from the changes now of our cash being brought in compared to what we were bringing in when he was there. But I, I will say that we, we've kind of done it the right way. I had spoken about this before. I was nixed on the idea. I was, I was told that this was the most trustworthy person in the church. Come on. I wanted to put a camera in the collection room where he did uh, the separation of the money. I felt it was strange the way he was doing it. I talked about this for a few when we first moved into the building and was told he's the most you know trustworthy guy that, ever, that, that there's ever been. This is what happens to you when you allow this. There should be no collection of the money or no counting of the money. It should go straight into a vault. There should be two people at all times with the money, not one. This is one of the other things that we did wrong. We had one guy, this, he was the only guy that was doing this. So we, we have to make sure that we, we had these checks and balances. I, I, I'm going to do a whole thing on talking about what we have come about. In fact, I'm probably going to get uh, our new accountant uh, to come out maybe on a Thursday night and talk about this because this is just really sad. It's very disturbing, very upsetting that we've had a situation like this in our own church, in our own backyard. So these things are still going on. You know, it, it, we live in a fallen world and we love to trust everybody and we love to be, you know, we love to rely on people and everything like that, but we just still have to have checks and balances in there. So any, any discussion, any, uh, some good stuff. I'm, I'm glad y'all have kind of like come out. Uh, we will be talking about this more. I will, I'm going to get another attorney on to kind of talk about being able to, I, I want to say it's very, we have to be very careful when we say physically stop. What do you mean by that? As I said, I teach where we heard, where we get enough people to escort the person off the stage. I would like to say escort instead of herd. And please find an exit that is closer than walking him through all the way through to let, let him spout off his stuff while the service, the service is going on. And so. on that really quick, dad, uh, on the video that we showed, they did kind of use herding um, in that video. They had law enforcement there already, probably part of um, the safety. But the other thing that I wanted to add, just uh, one more note on Vasquez uh, and their organization. They are really big on nonviolent uh, protest, uh, but that doesn't mean that he won't be a bigger uh, disruption. I was going through a lot of the different videos because they post every single civil disturbance that he does. And in one of the ones, the one that he got arrested for at his school was that he was told to leave. And instead of leaving, he just sat down and continued to shout. So if that happens, your church needs to have a response. Be prepared if you need to physically escort him out or do something because he has been known to just sometimes if there's law enforcement there or if the guy is bigger than him he'll just go willingly in all of the church videos so far he's left willingly and in all, all three of them uh somebody at the church has put their hand on him uh to escort him out so he hasn't gotten physical but he has 
just sat down and refused to move. So just keep in mind uh, that too. I just wanted to add that too. And, and everybody understand that we sent out a, this document, Jessica did four pages, four or five pages on them. And uh, we sent this out to everybody. If you did not get a copy of it, let us know. Uh, we'll include it. In fact, I'll tell you what, when we send out uh, thank yous for coming out tonight, uh, kind of a follow-up on this, we will send out the information that we sent before. Uh, we kind of cut the video down because the video that we showed you is over. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Yeah. 45 yeah. minutes long. So we just cut it down to the kind of the minute and a half of where he got up on stage and they escorted him out because the, this guy, his, his cameraman walked around and talked to people in the parking lot. It's, it's all out there on Facebook. You can find it. We'll even put that link in there. Cause I think we did put that link. Yeah. And the thing that was interesting too, is in that video specifically, we cut it out in the beginning just for time, but he was going to wait until prayer was over. You see him kind of get up to go a couple of times and then stop. He was going to wait, but then prayer went on too long and he just went up anyway. So he blended into the, congregation as long as he could so he and the other church videos i believe he waited until prayer was over and then immediately afterwards just walked up and then the other thing that i would say is that we have two uh, comments in the chat and one of them just said seems a concealed person would accompany the offering so that just goes along with having two or more people with your offering same policy in children's ministry and then just some more information about xr america and kind of getting into what they do and everything well, and let, let me cover offering just for a second. We have completely gone away from doing the old style offering where we pass, pass the, the plate. I mean, we've completely went away from that. All of our offering is done to where they put it into an offering box. These offering boxes are fairly secure. I mean, and, and plus they're on tall poles. It would be very obvious if somebody picked one up and tried to carry it out. Not saying that they wouldn't. We've seen, we've seen more bizarre things than anything else, but they're, they're fairly heavy and hard to move. And to go with what, um, I'm sorry, let me see, uh, Frank, Frank uh, to go to, to kind of follow up what you talk about. When we do collect the money at the end, one of us that, go, the, one of the safety team members that goes, they're always uh, concealed, uh, concealed carry. So we are a company and we take it over to the administrative office where we lock it in a safe that is kept locked until Monday when two of the church member, two of the church staff go in and do the collection and the deposit and all those things like that. So yeah, we did step it up a little bit when, when this happened to us, you know, it's a little too late right now. It's, it's really sad that this happened, but we, we live and learn, we live and learn. Uh, we have, we just have to be careful. We just really do. So anybody else got anything else? I really appreciate y'all coming out. We're, we're going on uh, 35 minutes after. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I want to respect your time. I'm going to go ahead and talk about a couple of commercials that we got coming on because we, have some, we do have some events that are happening here real soon, and we just kind of want you to be aware of them. We have our, we have our members only Thursday, June 17th. In fact, that's next week where this will be a members only, this will be a Zoom meeting. These have been fairly successful. I mean, I've been really happy with these because we get out here and we kind of like kick it around and start talking about some things that we're seeing. And then all of a sudden it opens up and it, it really is some good information that, that's being passed around. So if you can come out next Thursday, if you're a member of Training Security Allies, and I'll let Jessica talk about membership. Well, we'll get into membership in a second. I've got a slide for that. But if you can, if you're not, and you want to get into this, uh, we will have a Zoom, uh, members only next week, next Thursday night. We're going to do some church safety training at Venn Life Christian Church. This is at 375 South Broad Street in Brooksville, Florida. Uh, from 9 o'clock to 11.30 p.m., the doors open at 8.30. We're doing our new what-if training, and I tell you what, Every we've done it twice now, and both times, both groups have been the, the conversation is incredible. It is an interactive training. I'm going to ask you questions, and this is based on events that have happened locally and also across across the country. I said I said let's see 11:30 a.m. What do you mean here? You said 
11 30 p.m and i just oh, wanted to I? clarify we're not going yeah. from 9 a.m to 11 30 no. p.m yeah. yeah well thank you dear thank you for clarifying that that is important yeah. yes. just wanted to make sure yeah okay you could have jumped in i i wouldn't have chastised you but anyway this what if training, we're really excited about it. We're adding more and more to it. In fact, we'll even be talking about this that we talked about tonight uh, when, when we do the next session. Like I said, we've got a couple of new things every week. It seems like we pick up something and we add it to it. And this has been really informative. It, it's really nice also to get you, the members that we're working with, to kind of add to it and give us, give us more information, give us insight that we might not have seen. It's been some good stuff. All right. Save the date. Save the date. Saturday, October 16th, 2021, from 8 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. That is a p.m. there. We are having our fifth annual church safety and liability conference. We are really excited about it. We're working on our speakers right now. Right now, we're trying to get Frank Pomeroy from uh, Sutherland Springs come out. We're working on it right now to where he can come out and talk about just recovering from an incident like that uh, that happened there at Sutherland Springs. We're really excited about this. So mark it on your calendars, October the 16th, 2021, from 8 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. This will be at Generations Christian Church. You as members get a free ticket. We're going to start it off as soon as we open it up at a discounted price of $45. It will increase every month until it gets up to the last month, which I I think Wendy told me it was like going to be $85. So if you know church members that want to go, buy a block of tickets and get people to come because it's going to be a lot of information is going to be passed out there. Uh, we're working with uh, minister, uh, no, uh, one of the uh, girls that were there last year. Oh my gosh, just completely slipped my mind. But uh, we're having a lot of repeats, not the one that disrupted the service at the end. Don't worry, he's not coming back. But we are really excited about having this again. This will be our fifth annual conference. Before we get into this, I saw that there were a couple more chats. Let me see. Do you see anything there? All training records available for us, 18. Just the question if our training records available for safety teams. Uh, if you contact me, I will send you my, well, okay. Training records. What are you looking for in the training records? I'm not really for sure, but, uh, contact me, uh, Franklin and, and, uh, I will talk to you about this. Just send me an email on what you're looking for. And I will make sure that, um, or the training record recordings. I'm sorry. I, I can't even read. Yes, they are. They're available. If you are a member and we'll talk about membership in a second, uh, Yes, we put these out there on YouTube. There's a whole bunch of them out there on YouTube. This one will be up there in the next couple of days. But we do put these recordings out there. That's why we do record them, because we want to make sure that if your safety team members could not make it tonight and your church is a member or you're a member, you can share these with your team members. Uh, we do put these out there. All right, hang on one second. Got ahead of myself. Going to say this all the time. I continue to push this. USCCA, you don't drive your car without insurance. You should not be carrying concealed without some sort of protection. This is the one that we use. I want you to do your own homework. I want you to go out and look. If this one doesn't work for you, there's other ones out there that are good also. But we, we use and we uh, select this one. Um, so far, they've been great as far as answering our questions, getting information to us. Plus, they have a lot of training videos there of their own that talks about active shooter, how to protect your home, all these different things like that. Talk, uh, this, this last, uh, they send out a magazine. This last magazine was all about the nine millimeter. And of course it was the discussion between which is better, a nine millimeter or 45. I love that conversation all the time. Get up with me later on another date and we can have that conversation all day long. All right. Our book, our, our God's Unseen Plan, it is out. We a twenty dollar donation. We will send you a book, a copy of the book, uh, a paperback copy. Uh, we've been getting excellent reviews from it. I'm not just saying that because it's my book. I, I worried about it because I thought I have always thought to myself, who would want to read my book? But everybody that I have talked with and that has bought a copy and has read it said it is a great read. So 
Uh, I'll just leave it at that for a $20 donation for to Trinity Security Allies. We will send you a signed copy of God's Unseen Plan. We have free resources out there right now, putting together a safety plan, developing a safety team, carrying weapons in church, and Sunday morning, what to look for. Those are free that you can go out and download. All we ask for is your uh, email address because we'll send you something else. If you decide that you don't want to get any more emails for us, from us, it's very easy. You just say, uh, take off list. Our membership, online membership program. Uh, Jess, I'm going to let you take it, take it away. Uh, really quick, uh, Tim Hollyman said, FOP has concealed weapon or CCW insurance to members for $75 a year. Just throwing that out there too. Uh, but that, that's in the chat. Tim, is that the paternal order of police or somebody, something different? Anyway. Anyway, uh, so online membership program, uh, as we kind of already said, all of these trainings uh, are uploaded onto YouTube and uh, Wendy Howard, my mom and I are working now to get that updated so that way all of them will be on there. Um, the live online training that you can access at any time with your, your team, that was what that would be. A membership will give you a ticket, which we discussed. And then it also supports the ministry. And you also have access to the uh, member month, the monthly Zooms that we do members only, where we just kind of talk about um, any current events that we're seeing, as well as any issues that you might have, you can bring them up and we just discuss them. That's $25 a month. We're not running a special on it now, but we do some all the time. And uh, there's always an email that goes out with that. So keep checking your email um, and we might do a special soon. And plus it helps a college kid get to school. It helps fund my college tuition. So yeah. All right, we also have our church safety and security membership program for churches. It's $125 a month or $1,200 for the year. It includes the following two two-hour training sessions or one full day of training. Schedule a phone call uh, to, to where you can, uh, consultation to where you can call on safety terms, concerns as needed. Stop reading so fast. Five tickets to the annual church and safety liability conference. Discounted full strength and weakness assessment with recommendations detailing priorities in your house of worship. Safety team has full access to the online library and monthly member calls only. If your church cannot afford a membership, consider a local business owner to sponsor your church. We have a lot of people now sponsoring churches through the Centurion Club. And we just, it, listen, there's a lot of people inside your church that are concerned about the safety of your church. So if your church is having a hard time with maybe coming up with that $1,200 for the year, contact one of your local members. Who, who does a lot of work for your church. Uh, we have one church that five members get together and throw in $25. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's one of these type of things where it is feasible and you can do it. So uh, talk about a little bit about the Facebook Live that we do called True Christian Talk. It is looking at the world through a Christian lens. Uh, we do these every Thursday at 11 o'clock. We do know that we're hitting somebody's soft spot because Facebook suspended us for 30 days. So we know we're talking to somebody that's causing some issues or it's creating some issues for them. We don't really care. We're going to still put it out there. We figured out a way that we could load these uh, by sneaking through kind of a back door, and they're all out there. Uh, today we talked about critical race theory going on in schools right now, public schools. And if you have not been paying attention to that, you really need to go out and start listening because it is very scary what our schools are teaching our children today. And they are our next generations. And if we're not paying attention to what they're teaching them, it's going to be very difficult for us to try to talk to them about Christ. Because I heard it today. I heard, I heard one of my friends today say that he, his college professors said that Christianity was nothing but uh, herds, the herd mentality that when you became a Christian, all you did was follow the leader, your priest or your pastor or things like that. You did not have a personal relationship with Christ, your Lord and Savior. And that's why he went with Buddhism. It wasn't until he went to another meeting and found out about how everybody has the opportunity to have a close relationship with God that 
he became a Christian and has been a strong Christian since. And these are the type of things that they're teaching in our schools right now. Some schools under the critical race theory have been talking about that Christian religion is not, nothing more than a cover for white supremacy. So we need to stop this. We need to be speaking out about this. And Kevin and I talk about it every Thursday at uh, 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, on Facebook Live. True Christian Talk. Come out. We'd love to have you out there. All right. I see two more chats before we go. Oh, that's you. I think both of those were me. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, I should let you handle those. I was just trying to help since you were out here helping me. All right, folks, it's been really great being out here tonight. Thank you for coming out and listening to us. Uh, if you have any questions, concern, or anything like that, please, please, please get in touch with us, reach out, and uh, let's start a conversation. God bless you. Be safe out here. Be blessed. God bless this country, and we thank the world for all that you do for us, and we'll talk real soon. Have a good night.